everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I've made this box here and I was actually inspired by the box that my chicken Caesar wrap came in. It was just the same as this. So I thought I would turn it into a Valentine's make. So this one here is filled with love hearts, but there's also some other little chocolate hearts in here as well. Just to show you, you can get a lot in there. You could even fill it up a bit more as well, but then it would probably all fall out when they open it. But I think that's always part of the charm when they've just got tons of treats to use. But you can see there, there's some really nice, you know, treats, but you can personalize it. You can pop other little gifts in there as well. And with most of the projects that I share, you know, if they're themed, they can pretty much work for most occasions. So this will be great, you know, it's Christmas, decorated, birthdays, all that kind of stuff. But you can see that I've got that lovely stenciling on the sides. I've used one of my little love letter stamps. Nice sentiment and a little charm there hanging as well. The handle's completely optional, but it does look quite sweet. So let me show you how to make it. So in this one, I'm going to add these ladybird, chocolate ladybirds, and I've got some more of the love hearts there. So those will go inside. So for this one, I've got some square dies to cut the frame. But that is optional. You might not want to have this acetate opening. You can just leave it. Then I've used the Random Hearts stencil by Daisy May, and that's given me that nice detail on the sides. And then for the love letter, I've used the love letter stamp, and that's in my travel stamp set. So what you want to do first of all is two pieces that we need to score. So this is for the main case. This is a piece of eight and a quarter by 10. Along the 10 inch side, you're going to score it two and a quarter, four and a half, and nine and a half. And then along the eight and a quarter side, you're gonna score at two and a quarter and six. And then this piece here is three and three quarters by four and a half. Along the four and a half side, you're gonna score at one inch. Okay, so that's all the scoring. So this piece here is gonna be the lid. So what I'm gonna do first of all is get this piece die cut. So I've got these two squares here. I'll just give you the measurements. So the actual aperture is going to be about two and a quarter squared. Then I've got that decorative frame and I've stuck them together. Or die, sorry, and it gives me this frame. So I've just cut two, one for the front and one to just tidy up the inside. But first of all, you want that smaller size to cut directly into your cardstock. So like I said, this was about two and a quarter squared. And you're going to, you want the half inch at the bottom because that's the flap here. And then you just want to make sure that your die is, you know, is centered into this square here. So you've got a nice equal border there on the other sides. And then I'm just going to run that through my die machine. Then I've got myself a piece of acetate that's just slightly bigger than that two and a quarter squared. So this is probably about two and a half squared. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to run some thin tape all around the edge there. Make sure your acetate's nice and clean. I just give mine a little spray with some rubbing alcohol. And then I'm just going to sit that over the top there. Give that a good burnish. And then I'm going to pop some more tape on the top of the acetate now. And then I can just cover that with the frame because this is all of the inside. This tape here is the... It's either the Stick To brand or Crafters Companion, but it's the one eighth of an inch red tape and I will have that linked below the video. And then I'm just going to focus on the inside square, start on one of the corners and kind of, you know, push that down so it's like lifted everywhere else. And then you can just kind of place that over the rest. So it just tidies up the inside there and then this is the front and then I can just use my liquid glue now because I haven't got any acetate to stick to. So I'm just going to run some glue all around the edge there and then just pop that frame down in the same way. So now we've got the lid all ready to go. So back to the main piece now, you can just fold and burnish all of your score lines. So first of all, we'll start at the end where we've got that half inch tab. So you just want to cut down 
those score lines just to the first one and then remove these pieces completely. So this is the tab where this will stick and then that will be the front closure. So now we want to cut down these two here just to the first score line. So that one and that one and then flip it and do the same like so. What's going to happen next is these are going to come up and then this is going to come around. So this is the bottom and then these are going to come up like so. OK, but what we want to do before we basically what we want to do is I'm trying to think of the, the best order to do this because we need to create a tab on this piece here. If you if I open that one up here, if you sit your ruler in so it goes right across there and just draw a pencil line. So I'm just going to hold that in place now that don't worry, you know, that that's all moved as long as you had it where it needed to be to start like so. So we've got that pencil mark. Then cut about half an inch up from that right across okay and then if you grab your scoreboard again you then want to score down that pencil line so if I pop it in the seven inch track there then I can make sure that's where it needs to be like so rub the pencil line out now if you want but if you fold that over We've now, if I bring all this back around again, we've got our tab inside like so. Okay, you see there's the side, this is going to go on the top. And by having that tab, it just means you don't have any gaps on the side, nothing's going to fall out. So you want to do that again. I'm going to show you again how to get the pencil line. So just pinch these together. Okay, so just bring it all across and together like so and then lay it down and your ruler needs to hit the top of this corner here and then the top there so now i let go of that you can see what we want and then again just use the six inch one this time line up the top there and then line up the bottom yeah, that's nice and straight. I'm not going to rub the pencil marks out. You're not actually going to see it because it's folded over. And again, about half an inch. And then fold that. Okay, so hopefully that's explained that and I've broken it down, you know, as easy as possible. So you want this to be the last one that sticks down so it's one solid piece. You don't, I mean, you could have that over there, but then you kind of see the join when we add the mats and layers onto this piece. So what I'm going to do first of all is add my glue to the middle pieces here. So I'm going to use the Kalau, this is the construction glue. And we'll do that one at the same time, actually. And then just bring up both of those again just make sure you've got nice right angles if you want a line inside here maybe you're putting something a bit heavier in there now's a good time to do that whilst you can you know get in there you could reinforce this side we are reinforcing the fronts and the sides with our mats and layers anyway so that's going to add our strength but certainly on the base there if you want to okay and then i'm going to add my glue onto this And bring that one around. So that's all now stuck down. And I think before we stick the lid down, it's best to do the mats and layers. It's just a bit easier to get in there and kind of add some pressure to get it all stuck. So I've got these for the front here. So you can see where I've embossed it. I just used, like I said, the Random Heart Stencil by Daisy May and the Candid Apple Distress Oxide over the red card. 
and you get that I don't know it's just quite a cool effect it's really nice anyway so the white piece is three and a half by two and then the red piece is three and a quarter by one and three quarters so that one is going to go on there then for the side pieces I've got two pieces for my mat that's two by four and five eighths and then two pieces for the layer which I've already again stenciled and that's one and three quarters by four and one eighth then what you want to do just see how far or high up I came up here it was two inches so I'm going to put my ruler along the long side here and just mark two inches okay and then on the red I came up uh, one and seven eighths so you want to make sure you do it on the because it's now got the pattern on so one and seven eighths I'm going to do on the left side but then on this one I want to do it on the right side like so and then with your trimmer from that pencil mark you're going to cut up to the corner just cut across and then with this one Okay, so your pattern piece should be like so. These ones, because it's just plain, it doesn't matter if you cut them both the same way or same angle, because you can just flip one over. Okay, so you should now have two in that direction, two in that direction. So you can now just stick those over the top, so you get a nice border, and then you can stick them onto the side. And again, you've got that nice exact border. So I'm going to get those down next. Okay, whilst that's drying, I've got this piece to just reinforce the back. I did it in white on that one. So again, if you want to write a message on there, maybe you can. But this one, I'm just keeping red. So it's just slightly small. I'll give you the measurements in a second. Again, once you've added this glue, it's just going to dry like cement and it's going to really reinforce this. So that piece is four and three quarters by three and a half. OK, so that's everything now in place and that's drying nicely. Then I've got the handle. Like I said, this is an optional piece, but you want to stick this down next before you attach the lid. So this one, I think it was about the same maybe a little bit shorter what did i cut this to it's about nine and a half but i reckon i reckon eight and a half will probably be fine to be honest yeah i'm going to just trim that down to eight and a half let's just take an inch off ish so it doesn't really matter you know you might want to do a very small one like this and just have it maybe in the middle there i think they'd look quite cute as um little hanging you know, that's at Christmas time, little hanging decorations as well. So you're then going to just pop some glue on the end there and just stick it. I'll come in about an inch. And I'm just attaching it there to that tab. I might also want to take a little bit off the corners there because I can see some of the score line. Again, just add a little glue to the end there and just bring that one around so it's the same like so and then you can add your glue now all the way along this piece and then grab your lid here and just sit that over the top and that will conceal everything just flip it over there so it's all nice and neat inside. I mean, I guess really you could stick the frame la last so it'll go over that join, but no one's really going to see it anyway. So, but there you go. You can see now we've got that. I need to give that a wipe because I've obviously got something sticky on it again. 
So then I've got my Velcro dots, but you could use magnets if you want. These are the dot and dab. These are the 20 mil, two centimeter ones. They're nice and big. So you just want to pair them together like so. And then again, make sure that's all secure. Pop it in the middle and then just bring that down. I always like to run my fingers down the sides there and just bring it all down that way. You know, it's nice and straight and it's all lined up. Give that a minute to just adhere. I'm going to fold those back that way. How cool is that? I think it's so cute. I mean, you could have it just like decorated and kind of displayed that way and get rid of the handle. That looks quite good as well. Whilst that's still drying, I'm not going to lift that up yet. I've got this piece here, which I'm going to stick over the top. So it's the same size as this, so one by three, three and a half, I think it is, isn't it? Only oh, no, three and three quarters. That's going to go there. Then I've got this here, which is for the tag. Again, completely optional. I'm just going to grab some scrap. So a bit of scrap here. And I just cut myself the thinnest piece. So it's like faux string. And then that's how I got my little you know dangle there so you can just bring that around these are just old hearts from my stash and kind of cross them over just to tack them in place a little bit of glue there like so and then add a little bit more glue onto the front and then add your hearts or whatever it is you've got to stick to it and then add your glue now all over the rest and then I've just cut another one there and then just sandwich together so again just keeps everything nice and neat gives it a little bit of weight so it hangs nicer as well okay and then with the little letters on that one I've just got the one but I think on this one I'm going to have the three kind of fanned out and then stick that there but I'll do that and get that down as well I'm just going to carefully prise that apart and then you can just go in there and just give that a bit more pressure to make sure it's secure I'm just going to take again oh, the tiniest wedge off of the ends here because I don't want them sticking out there we go and I'm going to use the kalau for this because it will strengthen this because you're going to be putting pressure on this when you're lifting it off the the hook and loop or the velcro dots so I just line it up with the score line there and just leave that now to dry and just get these down. So there's the finished gift bag or gift box and I've popped the treats in there as well. So you can see all those little ladybirds. So it's like love bugs. I love the three of them together there actually. I think that looks nice. I might just stamp and add a few more on that one. But you can see the two there all ready to go in the hampers. I think they look really cute. And you could again hang these somewhere if you wanted to. But I hope you've enjoyed them. I've loved putting these ones together. And like I said, they work for any occasions. They're great for birthdays. And I can you know, see these being used at Christmas time as well. So as always, everything will be linked in the description box below that I've used today. And I'll be back again very soon with more tutorials. Also, if you like the Valentine's makes, maybe you're new to my channel, check out some of the other ones that are popping up now. You might want to watch those next for a bit more inspiration. See you soon. Bye.